What is the black cube? Is it the Borg? Most people associate the black cube with Saturn worship. What does a black cube have to do with Saturn, you might ask? Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun, according to the science. A cube has six sides to it. Six faces. Like dice. If we look at the North Pole of Saturn, it has a hexagon, a six-sided polygon. The sixth planet from the Sun has a six-sided polygon at its North Pole and an eye in its South Pole. Sounds like a creepy planet. What's going on with Saturn? What's going on with the hexagram? Now, of course, the hexagram is related to the hexagon, the six-pointed star. So we've got the cube, which is a six-sided object that's related to the hexagram and the hexagon. It's like they all go together. Essentially, the black cube represents the worship of the number six. Much like Satan worship. And to make things even creepier, we've got Saturn, which starts with SAT. It's a type of anagram for Satan. So the black cube is like coded language. It represents the number six, like many other things hiding in plain sight. The hexagon, the hexagram, the cube, the Saturn. Does Saturn exist? Most people can zoom in to Saturn with a camera and see the planet for themselves. You can check out those P1000 videos if you want to. But we see the black cube symbolism pretty much everywhere. We see it in music videos. We see it in movies. We see it in monuments. It's like... It's like another Washington monument, if you will. An obelisk. All of these shapes and symbols have meaning. They represent something to the world of the occult based on math and science, if you will. But it could be that the black cube represents something else, like a prison. A prison for our minds, a prison for this solar system. We don't really know exactly the confines of this world. What's going on here other than to say that we're trapped with these demons on this planet. These demons that body snatch people. Take over their minds. In fact, we're at war with this darkness, the spiritual wickedness, and it's imprisoned this planet, if you will, or this planet has become a prison. It tells us in the New Testament that Jesus came as a ransom 
for many? When do you pay a ransom? When people are being held hostage. Isn't that the feeling right now? That we're being held hostage by some kind of hostile, evil force? Perhaps the Borg? Perhaps that's the future of a satanic humanity to be assimilated by the AI, by the beast system. Of course, the barcode represents triple six. We know that the beast system is digital in nature. But what about these religions that are participating in quote-unquote Saturn worship. How complicit are they? How complicit are Catholics, for example, in what the church is doing? Molesting children, promoting Sodom and Gomorrah. How complicit are the faithful in the hijacking of their religion? We know that every religion has a flip side, a mirror image. There's a synagogue and there's a synagogue of Satan. There's a church and there's a church of Satan. And undoubtedly there's a mosque and a mosque of Satan that appears legitimate on the outside, but on the inside it's corrupt to the core. As Christians, we don't really get along with other denominations. This isn't exclusive to Christians by any means, but Catholics and Protestants have been fighting it out, and many other denominations have been fighting it out with one another, even though we're supposedly all on the same team. And so when we look at other religions, we're even more critical. We're even more critical of our brothers and sisters in faith like Jews and like Christian and like Muslims every Muslim believes they're like of the same religion they trace their heritage back to the days of Adam and Eve and Moses but there are distinct variations. Now we often see this imagery of the dark side, the Baphomet. It's baffling indeed. This one is missing the female breast, but it should have it. But what do we see here? It's the mixing of species, the mixing of, sex, of sexes. It is the perversion of creation and the natural world. When we look back into the Old Testament, in the days of Noah, the corruption of flesh is cited as a reason for the destruction of earth. Men taught the mixture of animals of one species with another. And they sinned against the beasts of against the beasts and birds and all that moveth and walketh on the earth. There's much speculation that chimeras were running around in those days. That the Nephilim weren't just giant people, but different sorts of abominations. And there's a reason why the perversion of animals and people is a major problem because 
people and animals are meant to host specific spirits. There's a spirit that goes with the body, if you will. And when we have clones, when we have genetically modified organisms, when we have chimeras and hybrids, we essentially have ourselves a major abomination. And it's happening again. Check out this GMO monkey pig. You've heard of all sorts of chimeras and all sorts of hybrids. Look at its eyes, red, like the flames of hell. Looks like something out of a horror movie. Part monkey, part pig. Could be a little human in there as well. We know there's all sorts of experiments happening right now. All sorts of chimeras being produced. Why? Because it fits in with their religion. They want to provoke the Almighty. And that's what their religion is all about. Rebellion. Evil. The opposite of what's in the Bible. The opposite of what's in the Old Testament. And so despite the appearances... The religion of evil is essentially apostasy. It's a big word for the world of today. Apostasy, what does it mean? But you have to remember that as critical as we are of other religions and other de denominations, most people that are in these churches Oh, check out this underground facility waiting for doomsday. Video guy is fired. But many people in these religions have no idea about how hijacked the world actually is. To this person of faith on the right here, they're putting the Torah on their forehead in a black box. Why is it a black cube? Does it represent the third eye? Does it represent the spiritual world? Do they put it on their head so that it's as close as it can get to their brain? Do they look at it as a black cube or do they look at it as Holy Scripture? You have to think about it as a Catholic. Not sure how many of you are Catholics out there. Most people are Protestant, but from a Catholic's perspective, just going to church on Sunday, they have no idea really what's going on behind locked doors. They have no idea what's going on at the Vatican. They're just showing up to say their prayers and to be a good Christian, support their community, to fulfill their obligations. They don't think of it as anything beyond that. Even though the Sabbath day begins on Friday and ends on Saturday, they go to church on Sunday. They do that because everybody goes to church on Sunday. And the church tells us that Sunday is the ceremonial observance of Saturday. So we don't really think about it, do we? And so it's rather easy to show up at some of these locations with the best of intentions without having any idea of what's going on. And so before we start wagging our fingers at other religions, we should think about what's going on 
in our religion, in our church? How many of these churches are now promoting the vaccine? How many of these churches are now promoting Sodom and Gomorrah? And so, it's so bad that many people aren't even going to church anymore. But, what does the New Testament tell us? It's not about going to church. It's about saying your prayers. It's not about being seen. It's about doing things in secret. And so, it's important that we remember that, that we keep all of that in context. But undoubtedly, all of the major religions have been infiltrated and hijacked. When we think of what's going on in Mecca, for example, with the Kaaba, how many people are familiar with that term? Now, thousands of years ago, or 1,500 years ago, the Kaaba was a Christian church. And it had all sorts of Christian artifacts in it. Today it is a pearl white building. Perfectly pristine on the inside. You never get to see the inside. You never get to see what's under the black cloth, the veil, if you will. And so, perhaps this represents something, this black cloth. Perhaps it represents the veil. Perhaps it represents the religion being hijacked. Or perhaps it's just there to keep that white building pure and clean from the pollution that's around it. Why does it look so similar to the North Pole of Saturn? Is that a coincidence? Why are they going counterclockwise instead of clockwise? If you believe the science, the planets are going counterclockwise around the sun. If there is an up in space and a down in space. But to draw conclusions, firm conclusions, may be part of the test. How quick are we to judge religions that we don't even know about. How many of you have read the Old Testament? How many of you have read the Quran? And so, drawing conclusions when it comes to what's going on in other parts of the world is difficult to say the least. On the surface, it looks real bad. We know that in the Old Testament, the kingdom of Israel was a breakaway kingdom of paganism and of wickedness. We know that the so-called Star of David, which is a hexagram, isn't from David at all, but from the latter years of the Solomon Empire commonly referred to as the Seal of Solomon when he started to dabble in the witchcraft with the many wives. And so there are many lessons to be learned in the Old Testament. And one of those, obviously, is what happens when people go astray. They get wiped out. Here come the plagues. Here comes the tribulation. Here come 
the end times, if you will. For those that got carried away to Babylon or for those that witnessed the destruction of the second temple, it must have felt like the end times, just like World War II must have felt like the end times for many people. But this is what happens when society goes astray. This is what happens when they embrace the black cube. They get assimilated. They get body snatched. Demon possession was so yesterday. And while it still occurs today, the future of humanity will be assimilation into the beast system unless it finds its way. So what is the black cube? Not every black cube is necessarily the same. and Not everyone in proximity of a black cube is necessarily a cult member. But there is plenty of reason to be suspicious of what the black cube represents. It's obviously the worship of the number six. It's not really Saturn worship, in a sense. It's worship of the number six. Saturn is the sixth planet. It has a hexagram at its north pole. Hexagon, we should say. You know, there are countries that call themselves the hexagon out there have to wonder about those countries. What are they worshipping? But then again, every country is essentially the same. Secular. Statism. Atheist. Anti-Christian to its core. But the black cube is about worshipping the number six. Saturn worship is really about worshipping the number six. Worshipping evil. Worshipping abomination. And that, of course, is manifested in many forms, from pollution to corruption to pride, to gluttony, to lust. Evil is the opposite of everything that's in the Bible. It's the opposite of the Ten Commandments. And so knowing this allows you to understand how the enemy operates. It allows you to understand what you're looking at. You can tell them by their fruits. And so, in conclusion, understanding the black cube is like understanding how these people think. Now, of course, this broadcast is for educational purposes. And even though we didn't make any of these videos ourselves, it hovers around the transgression of the Ten Commandments. And Exodus 20 verse 4 tells us that we shall not make an image or the likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or in the earth below. And so... We obviously don't recommend mirroring this particular video. We don't recommend that people make videos of a similar nature. You're not allowed to make images of Baphomet or the devil or Saturn or anything like that. Because not only will some people worship it, but 
so will some of the host of heaven according to the book of Deuteronomy. So how well do you know the Bible? How well do you know what's allowed and not allowed? We do these videos for educational purposes. It will self-destruct because it's too hot to keep out there. But in case people were wondering, what is the black cube? What is Saturn worship? It's essentially worshiping the devil. It's essentially worshiping the number six. And some of you may have afterthoughts about you know, what some of these other religions are doing. And as Christians, it's really not our highest priority. We're called to not participate in what other people are doing. But it's also important to understand the dynamics of the world around us. And to not necessarily just write off people of other religions that are doing the best they can with the best of intentions. It's easy to be just a regular person sitting in the pews, if you will, doing the best they can, not understanding the full ramifications, not understanding the full story. But personally, I feel like there's much to gain and much to understand from Judaism and Islam, even though they're obviously a bit anti-Christian in nature. The virtues being taught in Judaism and Islam are very noble, to say the least. We get our Ten Commandments from Judaism and Islam attempts to carry on with that tradition in a slightly different way. And so while we're certainly not evangelizing for other religions, it's important to look at the big picture. We have just as much trouble in the Christian churches as they have in their synagogues and the like. And we would really like to do a review of what's going on in those religions from the Christian perspective. We're certainly just not going to be able to unpack all of that in this broadcast. But as a Christian, there's much to be learned from our brothers and sisters in faith. And while it's easy to criticize what we don't like, it's important to focus on what we can learn from. And there's plenty to learn. There's plenty to learn from Jews and Muslims, believe it or not, despite the symbolism. On the surface, it's obvious that every mainstream religion has been hijacked. But in the scripture, there's much to learn. We'll leave it there for this broadcast. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Obviously, that's idolatry right there. All right. So, there's plenty of criticism to go around, to say the least. But it is interesting to see the relationship between the hexagon, the hexagram, the black cube, and Saturn, and the like. And of course, the rabbit hole goes much deeper than that. But if it is true that there is a sixth planet from the sun and it has a hexagram, and its name is similar to Satan, 
then we should be concerned. And as spiritual warriors, obviously knowing where Saturn is in the sky makes for a prime target, but you don't want to miss. We'll leave it there for this broadcast. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Until the next time, if you're listening to this, you are the resistance. <laughs>